<laughs> wink, wink. Well, with villains named Mike Height. Well, who knows? <laughs> Sorry, that's a 176 air quality cough right there. Uh, in studio with us, Jefferson County. Sorry, Berkeley County Prosecuting Attorney Katie wilkes delegetti Katie, good morning to you. Good morning. I thought you were just going to announce Matt twice. <laughs> well, so he's a pretty important guy. <laughs> you know, he, he does uh, does deserve a couple of intros. Uh, but, uh, A, thank you so much for coming in this morning. Thanks for having me. And, B, what do you have for us? I am very excited to announce that I'm going to be running for judge. I'm going to be seeking the um, nomination for circuit court judge in what will be, as of the next election or the next term, the 27th Judicial Circuit. And the seat you'll be seeking, is it currently held by somebody? No. Uh, yes and no. Um, they are splitting up the circuits so that um, Berkeley and Morgan will be a circuit and then Jefferson will be its own circuit. They added another judge to that, and uh, one of the judges in Berkeley County is moving to Jefferson and running for that spot, which leaves a vacancy here, which is all to say that I'm running for an open spot. Is that Judge Cohey? Yes. Okay, so Bridget Cohey will now be running in Jefferson. That is my understanding. There was an article about it. That's what she's been indicating. And you will run here? Yes. All right. How long is that uh, term? It's an eight-year term. And what has uh, gone into your decision-making on this process? It was a, uh, in some ways, a difficult decision to reach because I have really enjoyed um, my time as prosecuting attorney. Um, I, I feel like it's a, an incredibly valuable role to fill, and I've worked hard in that office to um, modernize it and um, make it run more efficiently, um, and, I'm, and I'm really proud of that. But um, looking at the needs of the community right now, um, I believe this is where I can best serve the community with my experience in, um, you know, in, in all, all parts of the judicial system. I think that um, it's the right choice for me. Um, you know, I'm, I'm born and raised Berkeley County. Um, this is my home, um, and I'm excited for this chance to continue to serve in a new role. Your father is a judge. He is. What was your consultation with him like on this? I, I've gotten that question a lot, and um, I I very much value Dad's opinion, um, but I did not ask him until I felt like I had made my decision because I felt like it was a decision I needed to make um, just to, to know that it was the right choice for my family, for me, the community. And then I, um, I, I mean, I've certainly talked with him about what it's like being a judge and he's ex extolled the virtues of that position for a long time. Um, but I, I think I, I learned what I needed to know from having the opportunity to watch him do it for as many years as he did. There was a uh, notorious or infamous question asked of you when you were going to run for prosecutor and in, in which was you were asked, are you tough enough? to run for prosecutor for judges. We always hear about temperament. Do you have the temperament to be a judge, Katie? I believe that I do. Um, I think certainly, as we've established many times now, um, and I think the three murder trials I've tried this year have shown I am tough enough to be prosecutor, but I also believe that I have the appropriate judicial temperament. Um, I was actually talking with my mom about this yesterday, and it's funny talking with parents. They sometimes... Um, think that they've told you stories that they haven't. And she said, just, you know, if there's that story I've, I've always told you about when you were in second grade. And it turned out to be a story where a teacher uh, who did some one-on-one -on -one work with some of the students told mom that uh, she felt that I was very different from the other students because of how contemplative I was, um, that I you know took all the problems very seriously and wanted to make sure I arrived at the right answer. Um, and I, I think that in a lot of ways, while in the courtroom, you have to be quick on your feet, and I'm certainly capable of that. I've always approached my work um, wanting to put in the time necessary to make the right decision. Matt Harvey, I'm going to go to you first on this one. Madam Prosecutor, you have been uh, very busy in Berkeley County, but you've also been busy in your term as, as prosecutor for in your second term now uh, with other other organizations across the state. Can would you like to speak on those? Sure. So I am finishing up my term as president of the West Virginia Prosecutor Prosecuting Attorneys Association, um, which has been very fulfilling. It's 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 interesting. It gives you a viewpoint into 
um, what other counties around the state are, are facing. Um, you know, in a lot of ways, while our population bases are different, I think your approach or your office is, is similar to mine and very different from when we talk to Monroe or Tyler counties or others that are um, much smaller. And so, so that's been pretty fascinating. I also was fortunate to be appointed by the governor to serve on the sentencing commission and have learned a lot from that process. Um, and then I, I recently also joined the um, Eastern Panhandle Bar Charitable Foundation and I'm part of the, um, or took part in awarding scholarships this year. And that, that was also very rewarding. And I know the importance of having a good staff and um, you've done a lot of things with your staff since you've been in office. Can you tell, tell us some about, about that? So um, what I did when I took office was evaluate the needs of the office and, and collapse some positions to be able to um, re recruit and retain um, talent and also make sure that we're appropriately compensating the um, people who were already there and doing a great job. And I think from there, it's really, um, it's really grown. Um, I've been fortunate to have the support of the county. They recognize that um, when you're able to recruit and retain good talent, that um, that pays off in, in dividends. And um, so we have worked on making sure that we have a, a team of individuals who are cross-trained and able to uh, pitch in and help whenever necessary and are not afraid to try the hard cases, not afraid to reach the decisions we need to make. So I'm, I'm very fortunate to have the people that I do in the office. And, and I know you're here to announce for judge, but I, I think it's important that the public hear about that as well, because part of the role of judge is not only rendering decisions on court cases that are before you, but it's the administration of justice and making sure that the, that the whole, that the process is moving forward and, and other issues like that. And that's something I do feel strongly about is swiftly and efficiently uh, playing that role because, um, you know, we generally only see people on their, their bad days. And that's true for civil cases as well. You know, people aren't going to court because something good happened to them unless it's a marriage or an adoption they're yes, sort of those are good days <laughs> yeah good the, day. those are that is something that i i certainly learned from from dad he came home um much happier on days when he got to unite families and um they, they were happier days um but we people are in the court system not because generally something good has happened and that's why it's important to make sure that um they get their opportunity to, um, I guess, plead their case uh, um, swiftly and efficiently and effectively. John Gilstrap. So being a judge is all about the administration of justice. Doesn't it, being born and raised in Berkeley County and having gone to school, you know who the jerks were in high school and, you know, all that, doesn't that complicate that? Do you, are there a lot of recusals that, that come up? Uh, that's a good question. And... Um, I, I don't think so. Um, Rob, do I get to take my headphones off now? Yes, it, if you don't want to wear them any longer because you disconnected your they, headset. They were, not, they were not plugged in, and I was thinking, gosh. Oh, they were right? never plugged in? Wow, no. she really didn't like those no headphones. One, yeah, no wonder <laughs> Amy doesn't like them. <laughs> she had ripped it out of the ground. I think for, maybe when Amy got up, they got disconnected. Yeah, for those listening, Rob asked me how I felt about the headphones, and I was thinking, gosh, there is something really wrong with them. And <laughs> but no, she was so um, polite. She was. That she said, oh, no, they're great. They're fine. <laughs> yeah, and more than half the interview. Yeah, so I guess we got a little insight on how she would be as a judge. Yeah. <laughs> yes, there's my temperament. Yeah, very so. nice. Um, Impressive. Uh, but to your question, that's something I, I do face now is I um, it's interesting to prosecute people where you're from because um, I am familiar with some of the people that come across or um, come through our court system. And, you know, I think that is not uncommon. Um, dad also lived here from high school on um uh we have judges who've been in this community for a long time at least one who's also born and raised here and i, I think that um certainly if there's a family connection um that's going to require a recusal there's there's rules for that um but just knowing who someone is certainly doesn't require that you recuse yourself um there's there's rules that of course i will 
Um, as anyone who knows me will tell you, I'm a big proponent on rule following, and of course, I will do that as judge as well. At a personal level, being judge, does that mean you sort of have to shift your life into neutral? I mean, you can't really advocate for things. You can't, I would presume you can't back, back one politician over another. I think it would be foolish to do so. I, I do. You so cannot. It's ethically prohibited. Yeah. Yes. It is. Okay. You can't even make donations. So, that's quite right. a that's quite a life change you're you're walking into. It it is a, a shift. Um, it certainly is a shift, but it's one that I think I'm prepared to make. Um, you know, as any elected official, I think would would tell you, there's already um, some constraints on what is appropriate to do or not do. And the the real change here is that it's nonpartisan. You have to be more removed from um, what's going on politically and um, I'm certainly ready to, to make that leap. Now, Matt talked about the importance of having a good staff while as a prosecutor. This is a, this is a new circuit, right? So does that mean you have to start from square one in, in staffing and, and finding the background people? I, I don't think so necessarily. I mean, I would need to, um, because there's essentially a new position being created, um, need staff for, for my office, uh, you know, an assistant and um, court reporter and clerk. But other than that, I think most of what's in play will, will stay in play. Does the Office of Prosecutor election coincide with the Office of Judge? It, it Well, yes and no. The um, judicial election is nonpartisan, so it will be decided in the May primary, um, but it's the same um, election year cycle. There'll just be a primary and a general for prosecutor. Okay. And uh, as a result of that, should you run for judge, you obviously can't run for prosecutor on the same ticket. If you lose as judge, then you would be out of office entirely, correct? That is correct. I hate to bring up the downside of this, but <laughs> that is actually correct. It, it's a risk that is um, inherent in this, but um, I'm, I strongly believe that I am best suited to serve the community in this role as judge, and I'm going to do whatever I can to make sure that that happens. Do you are, expect, I'm sorry. No, that's okay. I was saying, are there any cases that you've been involved with during the course of, of your time as prosecutor, Katie, that might shape your position as a judge in terms of how you hear or approach a case that's being brought in front of you? I think that to an extent, all cases that I've worked with will shape how I approach um, being a judge because I've had the opportunity to practice before so many different judges and learn different things as they've heard those cases. Um, I don't. I think that it's important. Um, I mean, you can't. We tell juries all the time, you can't check your common sense at the door, and um, I think that's important for for judging as well. Of course, life experience plays some sort of a role in decision making, um, but it's also very important to be able to step back and neutrally view what's in front of you. So I think um, my experience practicing before so many different judges is, is what really would um, I take with me to look at the, the good and the bad and how to, um, how to become a judge myself. Is there something that you wished a judge had done during some of your cases that you would do if you were a judge? <laughs> that is a um, difficult question to answer on air while yeah. I practice before. I'm a number known of for asking difficult questions. <laughs> yes, you're, you're just certainly <clears throat> good at it. Um, I, I think that, um, you know, what, what I've learned is the importance of, like I discussed, um, making sure to take swift action and make prompt decisions and i've i've certainly seen um judges do that extremely well and that's something i'd like to um, emulate um, when i'm in that position mr gilstrap what's your anticipated trial load in if that's the right phrase caseload i'm probably not in how many cases per year? Because it's both civil and criminal, right? So it's it's more than that. There's um, civil, there's criminal, there's, um, if you include in civil, abuse and neglect, that's a huge part of the docket. And you're um, one of one? Um, you mean? Judge-wise? Well, there would be five uh, okay. hearing all the cases in Berkeley and Morgan County. Um, so I, I couldn't really say until, um, you know, if I'm fortunate enough to 
get that position, um, there's the, the judges generally do a docket alignment and decide who takes which cases. And you know, it'll be a, it will be a little different in that right now, you know, we have six judges that we share with um, Jefferson and Morgan County, and um, Matt's not going to have to fight us anymore for. Um, <laughs> for it's going to be nice for the judges. <laughs> that smile. <laughs> yeah, it is. It is. Um, so I can't really answer that question necessarily, um, in part because all of the cases have um, different workloads attached to it, and there are so many different types of cases. We talked about civil and criminal. There's also, like we talked about, adoptions um, and uh, just a number of different things that come before circuit court judges. Mr. Harvey. Do you have courtroom experience? <laughs> You mean, do I have experience in the courtroom yes, as a litigant? Yes, yes, that, it's, it's a it's a funny joke because we were just you were just talking it's about a, that. But I think it's important that you that you would want to know about sure. a judge's courtroom yeah. experience because let's hear about you'll be running a courtroom. Sure. So I've been trying cases multiple a year since I was elected as prosecutor. Prior to that, I worked in a firm that had. Um, some you know municipal municipal prosecutorial uh, roles, but also civil. So I have um, courtroom experience handling um, trust and estate litigation as well, and and worked on some civil defense litigation while I was there, um, and actually plaintiffs as well. Um, so I have pretty varied courtroom experience. But uh, in terms of recently, like I mentioned, we had three murder trials just since uh, February. So and I, I participated in all of those. And you would be screened off from participating if you're fortunate enough to win. You would be screened off from participating on any cases that were current in the office while you were the elected. That's correct, at least as it pertains to criminal cases. For abuse and neglect, uh, apparently there's a there's a specific – there's a Supreme Court case that says because the office represents the DHHR, um, as long as the elected prosecutor didn't – participate in those cases themselves they can hear those when they become judge but generally speaking you're correct i'd be screened off from anything pending while i was prosecutor so this will open up a uh there'll be an open seat for prosecutor there will be i'm sure there might be some very interested people in that race i uh, i think there will um as as you know uh as a judicial candidate i can't really Right. Uh, talk too much about that, but uh, I, I know that there are and there's, you know, we'll be hearing from people in the near future, I think, or, or someone interested in that. Can we assume you've already talked to your staff and let them know that you are running for judge? Yes. Uh, is there a judge boot camp? And I ask that because <laughs> you're, if you're hearing criminal cases, uh, civil cases, family cases, I assume those are all a little bit different in their nuances in terms of how you hear and, and, and decisions you render. So I go back to the judge boot camp question. Are you expecting to learn this on your own? I believe there is a judge boot camp. Um, I, actually, Matt and I went to prosecutor uh, camp together. Um, nice. Do you got to do s'mores? Do you have s'mores? We did not <laughs> we have, didn't s'mores. have s'mores. It wasn't that fun. Oh, man. Um, I, I believe there is that. Um, at the end of the day, everything that comes into court is – guided by not only the law that's in place, but a set of rules, whether it's criminal procedure rules, civil procedure rules, trial court rules. And I would go back to advice that I know dad has given me many times, and I know he's given it to other people because I remember actually years ago, um, Matt sharing the same advice with me from dad, which is read the rules. You know, if you, if you know what the rules are, you know how to approach what's in front of you and make sure that everybody who comes into court gets a fair shake and is able to present their case. If a person goes into your court and does not get the decision that they want, do they then appeal to the appellate level court just beneath the Supreme Court? Mm, I do Generally, no. Generally, the intermediate appellate court takes things that come from family court or I think workers' compensation or those sorts of things. I think they have some. I think they have some civil some jurisdiction. Civil jurisdiction. Yes. Um, and then everything else would go directly to the Supreme Court. Very good. Uh, do you have any ambitions of a higher court at some point in your Golly, career? Golly, Rob. That's a. Um, that's an interesting question. Well, there's only four minutes left, so. Well, uh, it, it, well, <laughs> Senator Trump recently announced that he would like to seek the open Supreme Court seat yes. that is there. 
Um, he, he did. And I can say that what I'm focused on right now is um, getting to the, the circuit court um, here where I'm from, where I live. I, I don't have any interest in moving to Charleston. I'm um, dedicated to making sure that I can serve my community best at this community level. Is this circuit entirely Berkeley County? No, it also includes Morgan County, um, which all of it. All, yes. Yeah, it's all it will be all of Berkeley and Morgan. Right now it's the entire um, you know, panhandle, Berkeley, Morgan, Jefferson, but um as of the next election it will be just Berkeley and Morgan, which is great because um Berkeley and Morgan are so different, but I do love spending time in, in Morgan County. It's uh, a very different atmosphere and I've I've enjoyed the time I've gotten to spend up there. If you're just tuning in, Katie Wilkes Delegetti has announced that she will seek a uh, position as a circuit court judge. This is going to be a new circuit court judge seat. Uh, judge Cohey currently has the seat, but uh, will be uh, potentially seeking the seat in Jefferson County. And that creates an open seat here, which would be the one that you're pursuing right now. Uh, and it will be Berkeley and Morgan County. How do you campaign differently for the position of judge as opposed to when you were running for prosecutor? I think the biggest change is um, this is nonpartisan. This is a, a sort of like what you talked um, with Charlie Trump about yesterday. You can't um, take a position necessarily on anything that might come before the court. Um, there's a very set, a very different set of rules um, by which you have to campaign. But at the end of the day, it's still getting out, meeting the people in the community, or you know, meeting them again and uh, talking with them. Why I know that I would be the best candidate for circuit judge while my experience and my temperament make me best suited for that position. When will you officially begin your campaigning? Any idea what date you might? So, um, you know, this is my first public announcement. Um, the next steps are continuing to form a committee filing pre-candidacy. Um, the official filing period is in January, and um, but I'm sure that things will pick up before then. We've got a lot of events, the youth fair, the apple harvest, apple butter in Morgan County. So um, I'll, I'll be at all of those excited to um, meet and talk with the, the citizens. Now that you're running out your term as prosecutor, I ask you this, uh, should that be a partisan position or a nonpartisan position? That is, again, a difficult question, especially to answer as a judicial uh, candidate because, you know, we're not supposed to take positions on things that might be decided by the legislature. Um, what I can say is I've always felt that what was most important as prosecutor was that I um, looked at each case fairly and equally and um, made the decision that was in the best interest of justice um, to best protect the community at that time. Any final comments or questions for Katie Wilkes delegating? I do. As a practitioner of the entertainment business, I put you on the spot, Counselor. What is the best courtroom drama movie? Ooh. Oh, you know, well, I don't know if it counts as a, as a drama. I've been asked this question on the show before, mm -hmm. and my answer then was My Cousin Vinny. Okay. And I, that is the right answer. I, I stand answer. by it. Yeah. I, I love it. I go uh, there, and uh, was it A Few Good Men? Mm -hmm. Jack Nicholson? You can't handle the truth. That's the one. That's also a good one, too, there. Katie, thank you so much for coming on the program and making your announcement. Thank you so much for having me. Best of luck to you. Thank you.